On my behalf of my dad, I'm Richard Wilson, known as Dickie Wilson, uh, working at the time at the APB, it was called. I'm um, just known as a young fellow when he used to be at work about 10 or 12 days, come back and take us for a drive in the old Land Rover. It was a work ute by then at the time. And we was a kid and there was, it smelled, you can smell the strong kerosene or something similar to that, but very strong. He had little small drums in the back, 12 gallon drums, just, and you can see spilt stuff on the floor what he have been working and using at the time. And yeah, and just that sort of, and then he'd come home, you can smell it on his clothes as well. Uh, Mum used to wash all his clothes and, you know, and that sort of stuff could have affected us as family. And my mum, she had problems early before she, she um, the diabetes come in. She had a, she used to get swollen legs and high blood pressure. And that, and Dad, you can see, had a problem. They had stomach problems as well. And But in uh, I think mentally, it, in that time, you know, being a strong man, I don't think they showed him much, that much emotion, you know. The old bloke, they were strong fellas those days. Until later on, he, you know, started to get a bit, started to show some symptoms with the stomach and all that happening, started to, this sort of stuff at home. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I caused him to drink a lot as well. And yeah, and it sort of had that little family problems. And later on, I, myself now, thinking that, that it comes through me to my kids, you know. You know, there's anxiety in our young ones now happening. My daughter's kids as well. There's been anxiety, suicide as well. And the uh, oldest brothers, two kids, you know, one of them passed away with lung problems. I think the little fella, he died at, um, when he was a baby. And then the second son now is with disability. So to me, I think maybe it's continuing on into dad's family now, you know. It's, it smells strong, you can smell it in the house, on his clothes for days, you know. And mum washing it and us jumping in the car barefoot and you can feel it on the floor, you know, all this stuff. At that time, I think you can see they were struggling with something. But like I said, he didn't want to show that something was bothering, something was happening, you know. It was one of those old, the old blokes those days where they were the men, you know. And if they sort of weakened in some way, then, you know, it, it wasn't them, like, they had to hold, hold up the family sort of thing. That was, and you can see something was happening, especially when he had a stomach problem and he had an operation on his stomach. Then you can see a bit of weakness then, you know. Well, he, he's a stockman. Stockman, that's what he grew up with. That's the family life. And then come into town, got onto the job of APB. And I don't know, I think he was leading hand at the time with other blokes there, maybe the old fellow Ron Delvin in Derby there. But yeah, and from then on you can see things changing, you know, in life, yeah. Knowing those ones who passed on, they were good friends, they were family friends, you know, and it's sad to see them in an early age. Um, you know, their life was cut and short by some thing, some chemical or, you know, have taken their life when things could have been protected a bit more, you know, from and have more education on what they've been using, protective gear, all this stuff, but never, you know, didn't know anything that could have been that's thrown around or just squirted, you know, in the wind, against the wind, breathing, burnt all this stuff. It, I don't think he had anything as well, you know, to any cover up gear or anything that they've shown or how far this chemical can go, you know, within your health, um, you know. And that, you know, and just speaking of growing up, seeing, I've got two uncles, my mother's brothers, up in Wyndham, they used it up there, and he got, both of them got badly burnt skin. Well, you know, you can see it from uh, 
where it all been poisoned really, their skin, until they got to them and they died. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, down, down the track there was um, him and a couple other old fellas got together and started to, you know, work with the, I think with the government or someone up there to find out more on how these people and their families maybe can be compensated for what they didn't know what they were using, you know. And what, the more they've written about or read about it and found out about it, it was, he was pretty saddened by the people who were gone, you know. And you, you know, and that sort of gave him and others a bit more push to find out, compensate these people or their families, you know. Yeah, so he struggled to, him and others struggled to try and get something through, but I think maybe something's been chucked under the, you know, carpet or something's hidden somewhere that, you know, it should have been brought out to be, you know, fair to these people who've went out there, did it as a job, not knowing that how far this can go within their health or, you know. Mm. I think need to maybe come back, you know, even compensate or recognise these people who've worked for this, for this uh, department, knowing it was a great job at the time, and just, yeah, just give them some sort of closure on the people they've lost working with this stuff. Yeah, and, you know, at least compensate them or something. Just maybe write up a big written statement that they've been, you know, they have done something or given them something wrong that other places have chucked, you know, other countries have closed down and brought here. If it was closed down in another country, then there was something wrong with it, mm. you know, and brought here. So I, it's a pretty much, it's sad to talk about it, but I'm glad someone's come along now and sort of lifted it off the ground again and start to dig into it. I think something needs to be done and said from the government or, you know, someone up there to give these families and that who have lost people a bit of closure and, you know. I think um, when nothing's been done, there's people left with nothing like empty, you know. So we're, we're left in a spot where, where do we go from here? We went to the highest, to the highest level and that and nothing been done, you know. They left in a, you know, more or less a dark spot, really, you know, to find and to find this, like I said, closure to what has happened overall, you know. So it's it's good that it's come back now, and I hope it sort of brings sort of that stuff to the families who've lost the loved ones, you know, who've worked, and for the ones who are now suffering with this you know, has to live with it more or less.